Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate, and happy 2021, everyone. Have a, I hope everyone's having a great new year so far. My shirt this week is Death Cab for Cutie, a Seattle local band. It's their, their uh, album Plans, one of my favorites, so that's the shirt. But enough of all that, let's get into this week's latest dev news. We've got a ton of great stuff we've missed over the last couple of weeks. So first things first, Visual Studio Code Day, the very first VS Code Day is coming soon. It's going to be on January 27th, 2021, and it's going to be an online event where you're going to be able to tune in uh, basically from 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time and it's a it's a, just a great event for Visual Studio Code users. So you can come, you can meet the VS Code team, and you can learn some tips and tricks. It's going to be a great time. So check out a, a link in the show notes in the description down below where you can sign up if you want to attend that event. You definitely want to. And speaking of events, I just want to give a real quick shout out. The next Microsoft Ignite, I know it, it feels like it's coming up already. Microsoft Ignite Spring is actually going to be March 2nd and 3rd. And we don't have any registration information yet, but go ahead and put that on your calendar to save the date because that's coming around the corner. It's going to be a really good time. We'll have more information about that as it becomes available. But I just wanted to kind of give people a heads up that, yeah, we've got more Microsoft Ignite goodness really just around the corner. So check out the show notes in the description down below if you want to see the content from Fall Ignite from October to you know catch up on stuff. Next up, happy... 10th birthday to NuGet. And NuGet, of course, is the package manager for .NET. It is celebrating 10 years. Happy birthday, NuGet. It's great stuff. Um, I've got a, a link to the show notes in the description for a blog post from the team. Uh, also, um, the uh, VLC team published some of their stats from, from NuGet. And I think it's been downloaded. Some of their packages have been downloaded like I don't even know how many millions of times. It's really impressive stuff. So congrats to the team on that. Next up, uh, we've got a great blog post from my friend Chris Noring about how you can use Azure Key Vault to manage your secrets. And, you know, for me, one of the things that I always get super paranoid about whenever I'm building any sort of web app at all is did I somehow commit my secrets in my source file somewhere? I mean, I know I'm supposed to use variables, but did I happen to accidentally commit that? Well, an easy way to make sure that you don't do that is to use a secrets manager like Azure Key Vault. It's also a really good way for you to be able to you know, rotate your keys and your secrets so that you can keep things more secure. And Chris has a great blog post that walks you through the whole process. So check that out. I've got a link in the show notes in the description down below. And next up, I also want to give a shout out to a good blog post from the C++ Visual Studio team about how C++ works with Visual Studio and WSL2, or the Windows subsystem for Linux 2. And as the team points out, there's actually been native support for C++ and Visual Studio uh, with WSL 1 uh, for quite some time. And what that means is basically you can use any of the, the native commands from the command line in WSL 1. But the team is actually actively working to bring native support to WSL 2. And that's going to you know, require a couple of changes. And, and there are some things that um, they want to hear feedback from you about. So I'll have a link to that uh, blog post in the show notes in the description so you can find out more about what the team is thinking and also take a survey so you can give your feedback to the team as well. Next up, we've got a great tip from everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman. So, we are all spending so much time on video calls all the time. And there is something that a lot of streamers use. I actually have one. It's called the Stream Deck. It's pretty awesome. It's basically, you can kind of think of it as kind of a, a macro keyboard on steroids that you can you know, program ostensibly to make it really easy to go between different scenes. If you're streaming, have different you know, pop-ups or overlays or different camera configurations, but you can actually script it and do a lot of other things with it too. And so what Scott has done is he has uh, built some buttons for the Stream Deck that work with Microsoft Teams so that you can end a call, hang up a call, mute yourself, do some other functions. It's really cool. I've got a link in the show notes in the description down below to that. Thank you so much, Scott. And I've also got a link in the show notes in the description down below for some other things you can do with Stream Deck. Um, I'm building a GitHub repository of different hacks and tips and tricks. So if you have anything that you're doing, uh, pull requests are welcome. So check that out. Thank you so much. And next up, we've got uh, what I think is probably the nerdiest browser extension 
ever. And so what this is called, it's called Tab FS. It works with Microsoft Edge or any of the other Chromium based browsers. And it is basically a file system for your tabs. And so how it works is that it's similar to plan nine for any of like the, the Unix aficionados out there where you basically have a command line where you can manage your tabs. So if you want to close certain tabs, you know, that are open from a certain website, if you've got a bunch of YouTube, you know, a uh, uh, tabs open or a bunch of Stack Overflow um, tabs open, you can do that. You can also get extract data from the tabs. You can run different scripts event stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do. How much of it is actually useful or usable? I don't really know, but it's awesome and it's nerdy and I love it and it's open source. And so I've got a link to the show notes in the description down below to that because tabs FS is awesome. Speaking of cool things, on Channel 9 this week, we've got tons of great content for you to get the new year uh, going off right. Uh, uh, on, over on the Internet of Things show, um, Olivier and Phil talk about agentless IoT and OT security with Azure Defender for IoT. And over on DevOps Lab, uh, Abel and Alex talk about Project Bicep, which is next generation ARM templates. I love that, Project Bicep. And over on Learn with Dr. G, Sarah walks you through creating a web app and using data to make decisions on the basketball court. So that's really fun. So if you've got people in your life who are getting into coding, especially, this is really fun. So check that out. I've got links in the description uh, in the show notes down below to all the videos so you can check those out. All right. And now it is time for my pick of the week. So CES is happening right now, and that is the Consumer Electronics Show. And usually CES takes place in Las Vegas. I've been many times. It's a lot of fun. It's also exhausting. Clearly right now, nobody can go anywhere. So um, it's taking place online, which is really cool. But there's been a ton of big news from CES. But my pick of the week is just kind of a roundup of all the various Microsoft partner announcements. There's a bunch of stuff with DirectX uh, 12 um, and uh, basically different things that various video cards are going to be supporting, especially in the mobile space. And uh, so I've got links to that in the show notes in the description down below because I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like I just, I don't need a gaming laptop, but I want one. I just, I don't know. Let me know what your favorite thing from CES is in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you thought about any of our other stories and um, which, uh, what, what your plans are for, for the next you know, a couple of months. We'd love to hear from you. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It really helps us out. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to Microsoft Developer for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.